be making basics. What's going on YouTube? Be making bases back again with another dope video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because we're coming back to that with bangers. Today's video, I'm going to be actually going over some mixing tips. This is going to be some general tips that you can use to mix your beats. Um, 2023 version, all of that. Let's jump in. Um, we're specifically using Logic Pro 10 here at Beat Making Basics. So sorry if you're using some other type of program or whatever. You can still learn and apply this to what I'm going to be teaching you, probably some of the other programs. But let's just focus on Logic Pro 10 here. Now, first tip I'm going to make sure to tell you is to make sure you, um, you know, export your files as um, audio, you know, uh, your computer and um, the DAW is going to be able to process the audio a little bit better than it will be able to process like MIDI files, although you can mix MIDI files and everything like that. It's a general good process to go ahead and export your files and then bring them back in as audio files. Okay, as you can see, these are all audio files and that's going to be my first tip here. Another tip is um, use presets and you can also use one of our mixing templates from our site. Okay. Um, what the mixing template is going to do is kind of save you some time, you know, instead of having to come in here and bust all the tracks to different aux tracks and stuff like that, which I am going to go over in this video. You know, the mixing templates will save you time. You don't have to do all that. But um, let's talk about what we got going on here. So what I have here is I got my drums. OK. And what I did is I just highlighted like this um, on different tracks. So let's say with the 808. And I took it, come over here to the output, went to this bus, and I sent the signal here to what's called an aux track. And um, the auxiliary track is over here, and it coordinates to different things here. So I got an aux, um, we got my 808 going to an aux track. I got my kick, um, rim shot, and clap going to another aux track. Um, I got my hi-hats or basically percussion going to another track and I got my melody going to another track and my beat tag. And what that's going to do is basically um, giving me more uh, freedom and control over the mix. So let's talk about what I mean by that. Say um, we're listening to the mix and you want to like move up or down like the guitar sounds. Okay. Um, instead of having to come in here and nudge each one, what an aux track is going to do when it's grouped like this is you can come over here to the actual track it is, um, it's on, and move that up or down. And now it's going to move up all of these as a group with just one fader. So it's going to be a huge tip to make sure you're using aux tracks when you're mixing your beats because um, it's going to give you a lot more control over your mix. So say like with the kick and the snare and the clap say if i just wanted to turn up all those and instead of like highlighting this and doing it like that it's an easier thing to just come over here to this ox track and just boom move it up um another thing too mixing tips when it comes to like adding reverb um delays still things like that you want to instead of putting it on each individual track so say like with this guitar I want to put reverb on that instead of just coming over here to my audio effects and put it on there. What you want to do is send the signal to the track, okay, via an aux track, okay. And I actually already have that set up, but if you were to do this brand new, say you want to do a new scene, just come over here to the scenes, go to an open area, go to an open bus, open track there, boom, and then you're going to add an effect to it. I already did it over here, so. If you look right here, this is should coordinate with uh, this reverb too. So actually, that's that. So pretty much, um, it's gonna save you time. So like for instance, like with this guitar melody, I just can come over here and individually move the reverb up and give it, you know, each one a little or more reverb and it gives me more flexibility. Let's check it out. So 
So using nice tracks is going to definitely help it out. And using the sins to, you know, do your um, reverb is going to definitely help out as well. Um, other than that, I really want to just talk about um, leveling. Like really leveling is a real uh, art of itself. And it's like a real, I want to say it's a secret, but like technically if you just know how to level, your mix is going to sound pretty dope. So what you could do to learn how to level your beats the right way is just actually go to Spotify, Apple Music or whatever and pull up a reference track is what it's called. Listen to it and kind of listen in their beats or their tracks, something that's already professionally mixed, you know, released or whatever, and kind of pay attention to, you know, how loud maybe a hi-hat is, a snare, um, kick, 808, stuff like that, and then try to mimic that with the levels and we get some practice doing that um another thing when it comes to mixing tips um you want to keep things simple okay less is more and only add if you need to add something okay don't eq something if you don't need to eq it don't add a compression on something if you don't need to do it um that was one mistake i used to make when i was just getting started like i thought i had to add compression, EQ, and reverb to everything, um, each individual track, and no, you don't. It's just only do what you need to do. Um, last thing I'm gonna talk about is subtractive EQ. Um, basically, it's a concept of like cutting away frequencies to make room for other frequencies in other tracks. Um, this is the frequency range of hearing, you know, it really goes down from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, but you can kind of only see couple of these on here but say for instance for this 808 i'm gonna pull this one up and i'm gonna pull up uh this guitar so the main frequencies on the 808 are going to be coming in maybe from like 30 hertz to like 125 hertz and if you look over here on this guitar i've cut some of those frequencies out to make room for this 808 so i'm gonna play the 808 and this guitar right here and you'll see uh, the frequencies and you'll see kind of why I did that. Actually, let me put it on this other one that the sound doesn't come in until later. Put it on this one. So just as you were seeing, like most of that 808 is coming in over here. So came right over here and kind of cut that the low frequencies out here to make room for that 808 frequency to pop in. So those are the mixing tips I'm going to actually present to you um, for this video. If this helped you out, make sure you smash that like button. Um, also, make sure you head on over to our site, BeMakingBasis.com. We have pretty much everything you need as a beginner or intermediate level producer to grow and take your piece to the next level. We have bundle packs where you can get every course, every kit, every uh, template and things like that um, from our site or we break it down. We have other little bundle kits where you can get certain courses and certain sound kits and stuff like that. So check out the site. Um, it's going to help you out, man. And if anything else, you know, make sure you subscribe because you do have hundreds of free videos that you can watch right here on YouTube. So anyway, appreciate y'all. I'll see you in the next video. We're out.